Cool. So what are my interests at? Um, so Bloomberg does a lot of um, static analysis, Clang tooling, lib tooling. Um, it's one of my personal interests, although I don't work on the team that does that. It's one of my side projects. So I wrote a pretty cool tool I'm going to talk about more practical than, you know, kind of interesting and insightful, like a lot of the talks today. But let's go with it. So let's look at some code. It's contrived. So, you know, let's, let's, let's just be okay with that. I, so I'm going to create some vector. Um, I'm going to put a thousand strings into my vector, right? Cool. Now, maybe I'll create some data object, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to store or copy my, my fields, my vector, into my data, data object. And finally, I'll create some even, you know, kind of higher, um, you know, higher object request, and I'm going to set or copy the data into this request object. Can anybody guess where I'm going with this? Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this code? Copies. What should I be using instead? I know it's in the title, it's given away. You're right, moves. Unnecessary copies, we should be using move semantics. This has been in the language for what, you know, over a decade, right? I still see some code, I, I, you know, I, you know we're, we're a large, you know, company, we have a lot of code, and as, you know, engineers, even myself, as we're, you know, getting up to speed on the latest and greatest um, C++, still sometimes we're writing code that resembles something like this, right? We're doing some unnecessary copies, but now we have move. Now we can optimize away or remove these unnecessary copies. And so, you know, I, I catch this in code review sometimes, but that's annoying because I don't want to have to tell somebody, hey, you know, you should do a move here. It's kind of annoying. It's last minute. I just want to, you know, we just want to get that code merged in. Okay, well, let's write a tool to find this code, right? Um, and, and we can do that. We can do that um, with one of my favorite, you know, technologies, um, libtooling. Um, I actually, so I wrote this tool. Um, it's actually based on, um, a open source um, tech from Bloomberg called Clang Metatool. Clang Metatool is kind of this um, library on top of libtooling that kind of makes it a little bit easier to write a standalone um, Clang, Clang tool. Um, so like, in, like most Clang tools, um, this will work with any you know, compilation database. You know, so you generate your compilation database with your CMake project, and then you can run the tool on your, on your, on your code. Um, it, it'll generate nice, met, uh, nice diagnostics. Um, like if I run this on the code I showed in the previous slide, the tool will find, hey, you know what? Um, it gives you a nice friendly message. Just go ahead and, put a, and go ahead and insert a std move here, right? Um, or the tool can go ahead and just add the std move for you if it determines that that move is, is safe to, to apply. So when can we actually, let's get into, into the details of the tool. When can we actually you know, safely suggest a move, right? So in my example previously, we can safely, we can safely um, suggest a move here if we know that the last use of fields, variable, is on the line where the copy construct is happening. And we also know that the data or that, you know, that fields is something which is safe to move. A vector of strings, if I move that as opposed to copying it, that's not going to change the behavior of my program. Great. Um, we have to be careful. There could be something kind of silly, like, again, maybe contrived, but a shared pointer to a, to a unique lock. If I move that a little bit too early, I'm going to probably release the mutex a little bit too soon. And that'll be disastrous for my, my program. So we, we don't want to move anything which has a user-defined uh, destructor. Um, so uh, types which, the, you know, which are going to be safe to move, generally, that a tool can kind of automatically detect 100% safely. And, you know, string, let's just start simple, right? Any primitive types, of course, any trivial types. Um, I, I believe, I haven't checked this thoroughly. You know, talk to me after if, if, if there's a flaw here. But I believe um, trivially, trivially destructible types will be safe to move early. Um, as opposed to a copy. Um, and then, of course, you know, we can kind of recursively say any, any um, you know, composition of a container type or an algebraic type like the tuple um, or an optional, um, like, you know, so a vector of a map of int int, I can move that a little bit early and we're fine, right? Um, so I, I kind of mentioned, I alluded to, you know, code review um, as, as myself, as I've, you know, moved from earlier languages, uh, versions of the standard to, you know, 11, which is still a little bit, you know, um, old at this point. Um, it's helped, you know, my, myself to kind of, you know, learn in my code base, where am I missing out on some optimizations, right? Um, I think this is a good tool to kind of, you know, help, um, you know, help teach, you know, the modern language. Um, this is kind of right up in the alley with, with the Clang Tidy modernized checks. Um, I'm actually considering maybe, you know, this would be a great Clang Tidy check, I think, anyway, so maybe I'll go this route in the future. 
Um, and you know, I'd like to kind of open this you know discussion up maybe after, right? Like, what other tools are are missing from you know Clang Tidy? Like, that's one of my personal interests. I'd love to chat um, about some other ideas if you have any. So you know, come find me after. And with that, I will wrap up. Thank you. <laughs>